Hi everyone, it's Steph. I am here at Peaks Front Pond on a beautiful sunny day in spring with my froggy friends down here. And we have a storybook for you guys to share. I think it's quite fitting for the times because we're all going through a little bit of a change and that change can be quite uncomfortable sometimes. So we're gonna share this little story and I hope you find it as enjoyable as I am. And then we're gonna feature some of our frog friends that we have here at Peak. So come along with me on this little adventure. So I give you a froggy fable by John Lechner. Once there was a frog who lived under a rock by himself. Every day he did the same thing. He swam into the pond to eat breakfast he jumped onto a log to enjoy the sun. He swam back to his hole under the big rock. It was a simple life, but he liked it because it was always the same. One day, things started to change. A family of otters moved into the pond and started splashing around. Hey, said the frog, I don't like those otters splashing in my pond. A flock of blue jays moved into the trees overhead and they squawked all the time. Hey, I don't like those birds making noise, the frog said. And one day lightning struck the tallest pine tree which crashed into the water spilling pine needles everywhere. Hey, I don't like that tree in my pond, said the frog, but there was nothing he could do about it. The frog crawled into the back of his hole and stayed there. He heard a voice stay behind him. Why are you so sad? It was a small caterpillar. I'm sad because everything is changing, said the frog. I'm glad things change, the caterpillar replied. Someday, I hope to change into a butterfly. Trees change, flowers change, and even mountains and the mighty rivers. The frog just turned back toward the wall. He wanted to cry. The caterpillar left, but the frog stayed inside his soul. The, then the one morning, something utterly unexpected happened. The rock the frog's hole was under was lifted into the air. To the poor frog's bewilderment, a jar came down on top of him and he was whisked away in the hands of a young boy. Needless to say, nothing like this had ever happened to the frog before. It terrified the frog and he was jostled and bumped on the boy's bike. They traveled a long time and when suddenly the bike hit a rock. And the jar went flying. The frog fell behind some tall weeds and he sat very still until it was safe. When the frog finally crept out, he found himself in a strange and unfamiliar place. He was lost. The frog wandered until it got dark, then took shelter for the night in a hollow tree. The next morning, he kept on hopping, but it seemed to get more and more lost. Weeks went by and the frog encountered many dangers and many wonders. Then one afternoon, when he had just about given up all hope of finding his home, he heard a noise from far away, a familiar noise. He raced through the forest toward the sound. As he got closer, he heard splashing and finally he emerged into a clearing and saw his beautiful pond, his pond. He was so happy to see the blue jays flapping overhead. He was so happy to see the otters splashing in the water. 
He was even happy to see the fallen tree right where he left it. He knew he was home. True, his old rock had been torn away, but he never, but he found a perfect spot to dig another hole and with an even better view. After that day, the frog didn't mind so much when things changed. He could handle anything. He even tried something new every once in a while. And things were never the same again. The end. I really happen to like that story. Right now things are a little strange and challenging and it's a little scary for all of us. Things here at Peak have not been as they are. And even though it's a little hard this time and we're all weathering this differently, I know that we're all taking a time to reflect and maybe somehow we'll all find a little bit of normal again and be able to get back out here frogging with those kids and hopefully everything will be a little bit better. But until then, we have those little frogs to share it with. So let's go frog hunting. Okay, hello little one. We are out here at Front Pond and we got a little friend today. This is a green frog. Uh, we know it's a green frog because if you look really close at their nose, it's green. Uh, green frogs can change their color or range in different colors uh, based on whether the temperature. Uh, right now it's a little cooler out even though it's sunny. Uh, this little one was actually laying right by the edge of the pond, sunning itself, getting a little bit extra heat to warm itself up to maybe catch some bugs later. Um, another way that you can tell that you have a green frog as opposed to maybe like a bullfrog or another frog uh, is if you look closely, if we zoom in here, one, we see the eyes. Oh, I know, you're trying. Um, we see eyes, tympanum with the eardrum again, and then we see a little ridge going back along their back lateral dorsal ridge on either side. That is a great indicator that you have a green frog as well as looking for that very characteristic green nose. This little one is still very immature. We're not sure whether it's a male or a female. Um, is displaying female characteristics though because if we're looking underneath that throat it is white. Males when they're fully mature are going to have yellow. Also if we're looking at the ears for male frogs that tympanum is going to be larger than their eyes. Females, it's about the same size. So maybe girl, maybe immature uh, male still waiting to grow up, but you are a little one and we're happy to catch you today. We're going to let him head back and we're going to see what else we can find. All right, good to know I still got it. This is the second frog for the day. This one is obviously a young male. Okay, let's do a little contrast here. Come on in closer. We're gonna look at those eyeballs. You see those eyeballs behind it, that tympanum, very much larger than their eyeballs. We have that little circular dot in the center. That is one way we know we have a male. We can see obviously much brighter color on his head, way more green, um, very impressive and handsome. Oh, I know. And underneath, we just get a little hint of yellow starting to come through. Okay, oh, I know. It's okay, we're gonna go back soon. So that is one way that if you're out here frog country, once again, always hold that little guy by those legs. You don't want to squish him. Um, if you're out frog hunting, that's how you tell the difference between a male and a female. And I know you were probably scoping out that little lady that we might have had before um, since you were right next to her. So we're going to put you back there, buddy. Thank you so much. Our next find is we have a tiny little tadpole. Not super, super tiny. Possibly green frog. It is hard to sometimes tell the species of a tadpole. Um, so while you're looking at it, just size is a good reference. Green frogs are our most common that we find. So it's probably good, safe assumption that this is a green frog tadpole. Maybe wintered over one winter because it's not super, super tiny. Either that or might be early hatchling and been gobbling up all those little algaes and everything underneath there. Uh, very cool thing that I like to point out about tadpoles for smaller little guys. They have like a, whoop, Oh, I caught you, buddy. Good save. We don't want that happening. We'll go back soon. All right. They have translucent bellies on some of them, too. So you can see that nice little swirl in there of their little intestines, which means that these guys are super fragile. So we want to be very gentle. And you're starting to get a little sticky. So, of course, anytime a herp gets sticky, we got to go back in the water. Hello, little green frog friend who is right down there. You are being super nice. 
hello, hun. That might have been the one that we just caught. How well behaved are and you? We happen to catch a giant bullfrog tadpole. Uh, bullfrog tadpoles can stay tadpoles for up to three years, but you know that you got a bullfrog tadpole, tadpole just on the sheer size of these little critters. So tadpoles are super neat um, in the fact that if we flip this little guy over, you can see his little mouth. Um, these guys are eating algae out there. And when they start metamorphosizing, they start growing hind legs right out behind whoop, the base of their tail, little twitchy. And they'll use all that fat in their tail to start growing hind legs. As soon as the front legs start going, they start losing their gills and start developing all those bone structures. And they'll actually not eat until they completely switch over to being that full grown bullfrog. All right, little guy, we're gonna put you back because you're getting a little sticky. There we go. All right, everyone, so my first bullfrog capture, he happens to be a little bit of a special frog. Um, this is a bullfrog. We know that he's a bullfrog or she's a bullfrog. Might be a she because you don't really have any indication there of any coloring that would be for impressing a female, so you might be a female. Um, but bullfrogs have this nice little curve behind their ear here. So if you see the eye, this little circle is their tympanum, that's their eardrum, so they can hear anything that's like talking. Um, and then this little curve that goes down is a very good sign at that little ridge. Um, the rest of their back is completely flat, kind of uh, olive brown. Um, this little, uh, we're going to dub you a little lady. Um, this little lady has a very unique circumstance. Um, we found her hiding over by the Alicia Creek Pond Study Area or stream study area. And this may have been an injury from maybe a, a bird of, uh, like a, a water bird, like a heron that is a predator for frogs. Um, it also might have been a birth defect as well. Frogs, they lay many, many eggs. And when those eggs hatch, um, there might be other things that go into the development um, that they might have just never developed that arm. As you can see, this is what our other arm is supposed to be looking like. When we're out there holding frogs, you can see that once again, my hands are nice and wet. Um, and I'm actually holding her in a very specific way right now. How you hold frogs is kind of more like a lollipop um, by the hips. Her little, top of her hips are right there. Those are those two bumps. And then having their legs down because um, they don't really want to squeeze too much around their midsection. So that's why I want to hold around their hips. Um, they don't have a rib cage to protect everything like um, humans do. So you want to be very gentle and she's being really well behaved. It is cooler out today. Um, when it's warmer temperatures are going to be far more active um, and being very, very well behaved. Um, you can see lovely big legs and flippers. We know a frog once again, slimy, wet, found by water, huge legs and flippers um, to be able to jump multiple times their body length. And you've been very well behaved. I want to thank you, sweetheart. And we're going to make sure she gets back home. Here on Scenic Gorge, continuing our exploration, we have found a pickerel uh, frog. Uh, pickerels, we can tell our pickerels because of the nice square blocking. And this little one was found in Spackman's Creek on Scenic Gorge. Uh, we know that this is a he because if you get the side profile here, we have yellow. Once again, another male trait. Pickerel uh, frogs have very unique calls that kind of sound like creaking ropes, like um, as opposed to our green frogs. Green frogs, if you're out by a pond and you hear a burp, you will probably, it's like a pluck of a banjo. That's how you know you have a green frog out there. And then if you are out there with a bullfrog, a bullfrog is going to sound like a cow and go mur, mur. So very unique frog calls. Um, really great find. This guy's a little skinny, so we're going to make sure that you can get back and find some more bugs. Hey little buddy, just living under a rock, just like a froggy fable. We're gonna make sure that we put your house back. We're not gonna take you away in a jar today. Okay, bye.